Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. There's a war going on in America. A hidden war between citizens and criminals. The violent and the vulnerable. The strong and the weak. There's a new weapon in that war. The video camera. or an enforcer in the hands of the police or private citizens. What you'll see tonight is graphic, troubling, and real. It's a frightening view of crime seen through police dashboard cameras, hidden surveillance cameras, and undercover stings. Videos made by those who uphold the law and those who break it. What you'll see is the hidden face of crime and the exhilarating triumph of justice. You are under arrest, okay? Right? Technology and law enforcement united to even the score. Okay, dude. Okay. What do you want? I don't want anything. Drop your gun. Okay. Whoa. Okay. 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 Socorro, New Mexico. The middle of nowhere. Put everything down, okay? Officer Michael Applegate struggles for his life. The unblinking video camera on his dashboard records his horror and his desperation. This videotape serves as both witness and evidence. For over 20 years, video has offered a direct, unflinching view of crime and those charged with committing it. Patty Hearst, daughter of a prominent family turned revolutionary, brandishing a rifle in a bank robbery. Abscam, seven U.S. congressmen taking bribes from FBI agents posing as sheiks. Would like to give you some money. Automobile superstar John DeLorean allegedly selling cocaine to finance his ailing company. Washington, D.C. Mayor Marion Barry smoking crack. I've been tuning a lot. I've been doing that too. Now video is everywhere, used by police, private investigators, and even ordinary citizens to capture the hidden face of crime. center of the line now. Video vigilantes roam the highways in search of drunk drivers. I've been following him. He's drunk. I, I know. I don't see how he looks with it. Hey, do you need any <laughs> Neighborhood watchers use camcorders against theft, drug traffic, and prostitution. Just as detectives work undercover to catch car thieves and murderers, mothers now video bust babysitters. There is no place where criminal activity might occur that a camera doesn't monitor. And who is more vulnerable and in need of protection than a lone clerk? Orlando, Florida. An armed robber enters a convenience store. The clerk tries to call for help, but it is too late. Out of view of the camera, the robber knocks the clerk unconscious. Seconds later, customers enter the store and, thinking the bandit is the clerk, ask for help. Calculating and patient, he waits on them, knowing their money will only add to his booty. Meanwhile, the clerk lies out of sight, still unconscious. Finally, the coast is clear. He rifles the register and flees. He is still at large, 
this videotape remains the key to his identification. Corpus Christi, Texas. A pair of nervous robbers take over the counter of a store. One wields a police-style stun gun, but doesn't understand it must touch the victim to be effective. The clerk protests she'll open the cash drawer, but the second bandit, jacked up and jumpy, smashes it open. The robbers escape with $67. Identified by the video, these men were arrested and charged with assault and armed robbery. Kansas City, Missouri. Banks have installed surveillance cameras at ATM locations to protect customers from robbery, but these crooks have a bigger idea. They back a truck into the vestibule and use steel cables in an attempt to steal the entire cash machine. They are unsuccessful. The ATM is bolted to the floor. But the video camera recorded their license plate number, and police are now actively pursuing their apprehension. Southgate, California. Without warning, armed robbers enter a convenience store. One takes a customer in the back and ties him up. The others ransack the register. Satisfied with their loot, but aware of the surveillance camera, they search the premises for the recorder. Under the counter, behind the monitor. Now desperate, they take the clerk in the back and threaten his life. He gives them the video. Alerted by eyewitnesses, cops caught two of the robbers within the hour, along with the incriminating videotape. When police viewed this tape, they realized the same team was responsible for another heist caught on video just days before. Faced with this evidence, the men in custody named their leader, a member of the infamous Tiny Boy Gang. Oscar Jimenez, also known as Choco, is still at large. Southgate, California police consider him armed and dangerous and ask that you contact them if you know his whereabouts. Coming up, drunk drivers out of control caught speeding on America's highways. A police officer fights for his life with a gun-wielding maniac. Parents' worst nightmare, nannies caught on tape abusing helpless children and see what a fire feels like through the camera of an arsonist. Your help is next! When Video Justice returns. There you go. Ask a cop why video, and you'll get a straight answer. The camera doesn't lie. It always tells the truth. Hands up! No one can deny the benefits of a silent watchdog, both enforcer and protector, as officers pursue their dangerous work. You are under arrest. And in court, the testimony of the video camera is powerful and incontestable. I use the video camera as a weapon. That's my backup when I go to court. The defense attorney can go against what we say on a stand. They can try to dispute our actions, but once they see that video camera and they see the tape going, they can't fight that at all. Nowhere in police work does the recollection of events differ as much between police and suspect as in the case of DUIs, drunk driving. You sent your ABCs for me? You want me to sing them or uh, what do you, how do you want me to go? Backwards, uh, forwards, or how do you want? Uh, forwards. Forwards is fine. I don't want you to sing them. Just A, B, C, D, E, E. Okay. Okay. A, B, C. Uh, can I, uh, let's get yeah. one. A, B, C, D, E, uh, A, B, C. Wait a minute. We're gonna use this smooth crack as a line. Okay, you're, you're gonna stay in one foot. No, don't start yet. Left hand first? Yeah. All right. Okay, keep your head back. And your eyes closed. I get a little dizzy when I go back. Okay. I'm just telling you. All right. You have to have your eyes closed. You have to have your eyes closed. 
Just stand there, just like this. Heel touching your toe. Okay, right, right on this line, just like that. What you're gonna do is take nine steps. You understand that? Close your eyes. Your eyes are open. They're closed now, man. They're closed. I'm telling you. You want a lefty, a righty, a lefty, a righty? What do you want? Okay. What the f do you want? Yeah, nine steps. You okay? No. It's amazing when people get arrested for drunk driving, they come into court and they tell the judge or the jury, the officer never gave me this test, um, I was walking fine, and then you put the videotape in and there's the whole stop right there. When's the last time you had anything to drink, Linda? About an hour ago. About an hour ago? Okay. Uh, you don't have any gum in your mouth, do you? No. All right, I got one last test that I'd like you to take. It's a preliminary breath test. Would you be willing to take that? No. Okay, you're under arrest for DUI. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. Robert Nang, can I get another unit, please? Send a hook. You'll have to follow me to home then. All right. No, ma'am. You're under arrest, okay? Yes, yes sir. No, ma'am. You have to follow me. To, I, I am one block from home. No, ma'am. You are not driving. Not doing this. You are under arrest, okay? You not do this. Right now, you're working on a resisting arrest charge, which is a criminal offense, and it'll give you a criminal record. Do you understand that? Okay. Now, I'd like you to put your hands behind your back. I don't think All right. so. I don't think so. Ma'am, do not pull away from me. You are going to have to follow me home. No, you cannot. Robert Nine, have him come close to. No, no, please. Ma'am. Ma'am. Ma'am, do not fight me. Please do not. Okay. No, no, no. Ma'am, put your hands behind your back. Now you're under arrest for resisting. In addition to DUI. You stab somebody for uh, a DUI, and they start coming up with these off-the-wall excuses. Well, you said you've had nothing to drink. I can smell some alcohol, so i got to make sure you're okay. My lunch is dirty. Your what? My lunch is dirty. i got it all open. It might be a little humor, but, but it's not. You are getting that person off the road who could have potentially driven a half mile down the street and committed a, a, a fatality accident. Drunk driving is this country's most frequently committed violent crime, last year resulting in over 17,000 deaths. Video captures not only the truth behind the crime, but also its real life drama. Bracy, Virginia. A highway patrolman's dashboard camera sees everything as the driver of a stolen BMW eludes capture at 120 miles an hour. Where y'all at? We're in North County 33, around 125. We can't get it boxed in. The horrified officer keeps up the chase even as he watches another patrol unit spin out of control. Be advised, the North Carolina unit just wrecked. Somebody stop, he's gonna be hurt. Finally, the car thief pulls off the highway. All right, he went off. The approaching officer makes a split second decision. Out. He pins the escaping felon in his own car door. I don't shoot you. I got him. What I do, man? Get out of the ground. He's charged with speeding, failure to stop auto theft, possession of cocaine, and possession of a handgun. Ironically, the suspect has charged the police with using excessive force in his apprehension. The videotape will serve as key evidence in both matters. Come back over here, 
Policemen will tell you that most of their work is ordinary and uneventful, but when it turns bad, it turns real bad. Okay, 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 dude, okay, come on. That was the, the low point of my entire life, I think. When you're looking down the barrel of a 38 automatic, it's a real bad, bad feeling. Southbound I-25 with the beige four-door North Carolina Henry Tom. Secor in New Mexico. Officer Michael Applegate pulls over a car for a routine infraction, speeding. Okay, 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 dude. Okay, come on. I don't want anything. Drop your gun. Okay, 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 okay. Let me put this down. I'll put everything down for you. I'll put everything down. Okay. Nobody. I didn't call it in. I'll take my ring and turn it off. I won't touch you, man. Turn it off. Please. Put the gun away, all right? Be cool about this. I didn't. I don't even know who you are, man. You want you pull over? Because you were speeding. You want me to turn my radio off? I'll turn my radio off, okay? I'm cool. You want me to give it to you? No, no, turn around. Okay, okay, okay. He had the gun to my head, back behind my ear right here, like this. Once I tried to, to uh, take the weapon from him and did not succeed, I sincerely thought that I was going to be killed. Don't do it, man, please. Listen, I got a family. Listen, man. I'll catch you. Okay. okay. Another officer rushes to Applegate's aid, but the assailant refuses to surrender. Drop your gun. Hey, listen, wait a minute. Let me talk to you. Stop, stop. Don't come any closer. Let, let me talk to you. Hey, hey. Let me talk to you. Let me just, listen, let me tell you something. Just so you don't get your ass in hot water, take your finger off the trigger and keep the gun there just so it doesn't go off up the accident, okay? Hi, you... Overwhelmed and frightened, the assailant decides the only way out is to take the officer hostage. Listen, man. Slowly get in. Listen, man. Slowly get in that car. I think it's cool. Get in. Get in. Let me just tell you something, okay? Get in. With a loaded gun at his temple, Officer Applegate is now at the mercy of the assailant and his accomplices. What none of them know is that the other officer has radioed ahead for a roadblock. We drove approximately 12 miles south on the interstate. As we were top the hill, just uh, coming into Socorro, the state police had a roadblock set up, and that was the best thing that I'd ever seen in my life at that time. Overwhelmed by the futility of his situation, the gunmen surrendered. I think all officers should have a video camera. You can critique yourself, you know, you can use it as evidence. He is awaiting trial, charged with kidnapping, aggravated assault on a police officer, possession of a firearm, armed robbery, and auto theft. The video camera in this particular incident is a solid piece of evidence in the crimes that were committed against me. You know, it doesn't get any better than that. Coming up, flashers are caught in the act of sexually harassing helpless victim. This is the view from inside a drug deal. Every day, undercover police officers risk their lives to protect ours. Here on the front lines, video doesn't just watch. It goes inside, comes a weapon of arrest and conviction. This is my 40. 
No aspect of police work is as dangerous and requires the delicate balance of nerve and tact as undercover. being an undercover cop, it takes a little bit of being crazy, a little bit of stupidity. It puts you right on the edge. Um, you're always there in the action. And with the video camera there, you have so much proof. There's, there's no disputing it whatsoever. For Officer Rick White, it's just another day on the job. Only his job is buying drugs and busting dealers. We were doing a countywide operation and they wanted me to try this one street. It's a dead end road. And as I started to turn onto the street, I noticed there was a large 20 or so people standing where the drug dealers always stood. One guy started yelling at, hey, I know you, I know you, you're Jay's boys, meaning I was a police officer. While he was doing that, another guy walked around in the front of the car and came up to the driver's door. thing I remember, I woke up in the hospital. The video camera caught this guy looking in the window, standing there with a smile on his face. He bent over and picked up this large piece of concrete, and then he just drew back as far as hard as he could and threw it straight through the window and hit me in the head with it. My partner said I drove down to the end of the street, turned around, and came back through. We got out of the car and then went out completely. And they viewed the tape and they saw what had happened. They called over one of the road officers who identified him immediately. The uh, video hung him. The reaction on the jury's face when they played it, on the judge himself, you could tell that they didn't want to see it again. Once was enough for them. He's currently serving 15 years and in a civil judgment was ordered to pay Officer White $1.2 million. Dayton, Ohio. An undercover setup sours. The men in the car are police officers posing as drug buyers. But these dealers have a different idea. They are simply going to rob their customers. They don't realize that 20 yards away, a police backup team waits to apprehend them. Backup officers rush to their aid, capturing the dealer and his accomplice. They were convicted of drug trafficking and robbery and sentenced to 17 and 21 years, no parole. You're not a cop, are you? Oh, man. La Crosse, Wisconsin. A desperate husband solicits a gun for hire to kill his estranged wife in the hope of ending a prolonged and bitter divorce. What's the chances of removing her and making her disappear? That too tough can be done. No. That too tough can be done. No, that can be done. The best is if she disappears. So there's no corpse. Okay. All right, do you, do you care how it's done? I mean, do you want to go quick or sleep? Or suffer with that make any, make any difference. Just go on. Out of here. Yeah, we'll make it easier on right. yourself. But I don't want it done this week. You mean this fall? Coming? Yeah. My son's birthday, I just want to be right. Now, if she's not there, she may be with her boyfriend, though. Well, that's going to be a problem. I mean, the price is going to double if there's two there. Well, if he's in the way, take him. Take him home. You pay for that? 
I'd make it right with it. What he does not know is that this hitman is in fact a police officer pretending to be a sadistic killer to draw the husband out. You know, sometimes, you know, I have done things where I make it look like an accident. You know, does she, does she have stairs in that house? Is it a two-story? Basement stairs. You know, I could, like, maybe snap the neck and then throw her down, and it might look like she fell down the stairs. That might work. But this is something you got to want to do. You want this done. Okay, because I'm going to do it for you. <laughs> okay. All right, then. Well, that's all I got, then. He was convicted of attempted murder and sentenced to 35 years in prison. The details of the divorce have yet to be settled. Video technology can also be a powerful and positive aid to rescue work. Fairfax, Virginia. Police helicopters scour a neighborhood with infrared video in search of a man threatening suicide. What's your location? As police approach, he sits on the ground and aims the gun at his head. Police on foot, guided by an officer on the chopper, leap in and save his life. Okay, okay, we have them. We have officers that have just tackled the... He was arrested and remanded for psychiatric evaluation. Okay, yeah, where's the gun now? Gun! Okay, I think he had tossed the gun away. It looks like he's going to be in custody. Coming up, sexual perverts caught in the act by their disgusted victims. A violent nanny's abusive rage videotaped by a child-shocked parent. The most terrifying view of fire you've ever seen through the eyes of the arsonist. Look at it. Look at it. As private citizens saw how powerful a weapon video had become, they began to arm themselves. Not with guns, but with cameras. You're on camera, dude. Private citizens can get into neighborhoods. Well, I shouldn't say that we can't get into, but when we get there, everybody knows the police are here. And they stop their activity. These video vigilantes patrolling their neighborhoods with video cameras have become the new posses of our day. Phoenix, Arizona. Fed up with an explosion of crime and frustrated by police who couldn't do anything against lawbreakers they couldn't see, Walter and Colleen Ainsley took to the streets with their video camera. Wait, wait, wait a while, though. They're still dealing drugs right now. What? I've got them though right now. My first reaction to filming someone was, if they look over here, we're dead. 2.15 a.m. It's the kind of scene that happens sadly any night, anywhere in America, where unseen means unsolved. A gas station. A car. A gun. Only this night, they were watched and recorded. Under cover of night, a street gang stages a hit on their rivals. In the ensuing chaos, the gunman runs and finally escapes. Amazingly, it was all caught on tape. Photographing bad guys is not a game. It's a serious decision in your life to determine your environment. The suspects were arrested, identified by this video. It was the third shooting at that gas station that month. There's a tradition in America of people wanting to take matters into their own hands. People are frustrated that crime-fighting strategies have not been effective. And if buying a video camera is an effective way of driving these people out of their neighborhood and making it safer, that's a good thing. The worse the bad guy is, the less he wants contact with a good guy. You've got the camera, the law's right behind you, it's time to book. The Ainsley's crime-busting footage has led to more than 100 arrests and encouraged other Phoenix residents to do the same. There have been a lot of changes in Phoenix in the eight years I've been working as a police officer, and I think a lot of them are because of the video cameras. 
and I can see it being helpful in the future as well. No criminal predator is more elusive than one who relies on being unseen and unobserved. Stewart, Florida. Imagine this, a man outside your window, watching, peeping, lurking. And then, just when you sense he's there, he's gone. Fed up, Sally Hain planted a video camera in her laundry room and caught this pervert in the act. She took the tape to the police. He was arrested for lewd and lascivious behavior. The videotape makes it real what exactly a pervert is and what exactly a pervert does. And we're talking about sex offenders here. New Smyrna, Florida. Disgusted by the behavior of a neighborhood flasher, Lisa Davis approached the police who told her there was nothing they could do, not without solid evidence. So she set up her own video stakeout. What she recorded was a day-to-day -day chronicle of his arrogant indecencies perpetrated as she goes about her chores, doing her laundry or taking out her trash. Convinced, the police observe along with her video camera. What do you think? You think that's enough? He knows he's up. Yeah, excuse me if I walk over there to the Yeah, he's, this is good enough. This is good enough. Thank you. They wait until they've recorded the necessary evidence and arrest him. Good deal. All right. Good. Yeah. The video camera makes it real when the victim comes forward. Victims in these kinds of circumstances are frequently in the position of having to be my word against his word. This becomes empowerment. Nowhere does the prospect of crime become more sinister, more terrifying than against our families. We warn you that what you are about to see is graphic and disturbing. Powerful testimony to the benefit of video surveillance and the growing use of nanny cams. Houston, Texas. A young couple hire a live-in nanny to care for their year-old son, Peyton, who soon begins to exhibit behavioral problems. At first, they seek a medical explanation. Peyton had been pulling out his eyelashes. He wasn't eating properly, he wasn't gaining weight. His speech was very, very delayed. I'd taken him back and forth to the doctor on numerous occasions. Peyton's grandmothers noticed the child's strange reaction to the nanny and encouraged the couple to investigate her. I really didn't think that there was anything going on in my house. We thought, okay, this is going to make them hush up, and we won't have to listen to this anymore because we love Kathy. We think everything's wonderful here. It couldn't be any better. And so by putting the camera in the house, we just thought, well, everybody will leave us alone now. What the camera recorded is every parent's worst nightmare. I nearly passed out when I saw what was on the tape. Absolutely the opposite of what I thought was going on in my house was going on in my house. She was verbally and physically abusing my child. I'm new to being a father and everything, and I just felt like I had not done a good job of protecting my child. Amy took the tape to the police, who immediately arrested the nanny. She was convicted of child endangerment and sentenced to prison for two years. I guess the reason I feel that it's important for people to see this tape is so that they can really realize that this can happen to them. We're normal people. We lived in a normal home in a normal small town. This is that this can happen no matter where you live. It made a believer out of me that a video camera can save your life.
Coming up, a strung out drug dealer tapes himself at his illegal drug lab. An arsonist video their fiery rampage. When Video Justice 2 returns. Nothing is more horrifying to witness than a criminal's direct, unblinking confession. Investigators videotape these interrogations to provide an objective record, but they capture more than just the facts. This is a first-hand look into the mind of the criminal. What was Kevin doing while um, Steve Lopez was holding her hands and hitting her with the brick? He was having sex with her. You said that he was kneeling on her arms? Yeah, on her arms. And what was he doing with his hands? He was covering her mouth. But every time she was tall, he was smacking. He said, sit up. He kept smacking. He picked up the brick and he hit her with the brick twice. Where did he hit her with the brick? Around her face, like around her head or something up here. After he hit her in the head with the brick, did she stop screaming? Yeah, she was like shocked. I wanted to kill those guys. I wanted to maim those guys. I wanted to make them suffer in every way I could. It is by exploring the criminal mind that we stand the best chance to really understand. I turned into a vicious animal, and that's what I was. When criminals are the ones who use video, when they pick up the camera to record and replay their own activities, they provide us with a chilling view of their world as they see it. <laughs> Oh. Riverside, California. Uh, Police discovered this home video among the contents of an abandoned drug laboratory. Like... Speedmaker Aaron Yost insanely boasts of his drug manufacturing skills on a tape that he meant to send to his mentor, the man who taught him how to make speed. Look at that. You see that over there? Yeah, it's recording. Is that your... Looks like your average everyday ordinary liquid mask in a jar. Well, I wonder if I could get a half a gram out of this. Oh, zoom, yeah, let's give it a zoom job. When finished, these vials will contain an estimated $22,000 worth of deadly speed. Oh, God. That's wonderful. But in the hands of the police, Yost's home movie turned on him, providing the key connection between the man and his paraphernalia. He was convicted his third strike and sentenced to 35 years. Oh, yeah. Coming up, the terrifying view from an arsonist video camera when Video Justice 2 returns. Your house is next! <sighs> Redwood City, California, 1987, a town plagued by a series of arson fires. No evidence, no clues, no witnesses. The case was closed. Two years later, a farm worker came across an eerie videotape along with cassettes of metal music and a ceramic death skull. On it is the voice of an arsonist viewing and videotaping his own ghoulish work. This is what goes through his mind as he sets and watches his fires. Look at it. Look at it. This is mine. Stymied, investigators released the video to television. This led to the identification of the blazing homes. What we have here is a rare view 
complete with sound of how the serial arsonist views his work. This is pure sex. These people are absolutely fixated on just how powerful fire is, on how it destroys things, on how it smells, how it looks. Every aspect of this is the equivalent of a sexual turn-on. <laughs> Armed with the videotape, Redwood City detectives tracked down the teenage pyromaniacs. When they were arrested, a bizarre cache of tapes was discovered. They'd videoed newspaper headlines of all their devastation, a chronicle of over 60 other arsons. Not only do they get off on the power to create these flames, but they also get off on the power to, to have the whole community in uproar over their activities. And he's tracking it, like they usually do. The arsonists also tape themselves as werewolves and vampires. The primary arsonist in this case was not very talkative. He was very difficult to interview. Uh, he was very quiet and withdrawn and very uh, afraid. And at one point, he broke down and cried. He just turned out to be a troubled youth. Arsons are very hard to investigate. And this case was closed at the time this tape came to our possession. So without this tape, the case would not have been reopened and it would not have been solved. Your house is next! <sighs> the teenage arsonist received psychiatric treatment. Since that time, there have been no more fires.